I'm pretty much done with the Space Worm boss fight. It now spawns after a set amount of time, which will be around 2 minutes, but I set it lower for testing. They now drop points and a boss core when the last one is killed. These are displayed in the top left and will be used to unlock talents later. It's a lot easier to do the blog format, so I'll probably do that from now on. Thanks for watching the Sturb Star update, and have a great day! So, I want to delete the space worm and make a new node for the boss. And I'll save it as a scene as boss spawner. And this will handle all the bosses. Uh, so a lot of timer for the worm spawner. And I'll probably set it to like five minutes, um, but I'll set it to ten seconds for debug. Uh, we'll start it auto start, and we only want it to go once so it doesn't spawn a bunch of them. Alright, attach a script, and we'll connect to the timeout signal. Uh, okay, so we'll spawn a wormhole. load wormhole that instance and then we will set the coordinates to the player coordinates so position equals connector to star global position and then we'll add a child wormhole. No. Spawn explosion draw explosion. Yeah. So that's just so it renders behind everything else. It's not actually an explosion, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Um, that might... So I'll see if that works. Uh, yeah. It should. Right. Okay. Um, probably just comment that out for now and try again. So, after 10 seconds, we should see a wormhole. Hey, that worked. Okay. So now, we'll add a spawn space worm. And probably at the wormhole. So, position, wormhole position, and then we'll say, uh, yeah, that might not work. Okay, so then we'll say, worm equals 
new instance. Uh, I'm not sure. I think I have to add it to the scene first and then build it, potentially. That's gonna work. Okay, so we're gonna connect the um wormhole. Uh so we're gonna connect the open signal from the wormhole. To the spawn worm function. Does this? This doesn't. Okay, so it throws. It does. Yeah. So it throws itself. So this is actually um so we'll say worm dot position equals worm hole global position. Okay. That might work. I'm not sure. Time to find out. I'm probably going to turn the timer down <coughs> quite a bit. Hey! Wow. <laughs> Is it doing the laser beam cycle? Oh, yeah. It is. Well, that worked considerably better than expected. Okay. Well, there you go. Very cool. Then we want the wormhole to close once it's done spawning, so we'll call the close function uh, after it spawns the worm. I also want the screen to flash purple when the when the worm is spawned so I'll make a new color rect um, turn down the opacity and the green so it's probably like that nice purple color okay um, we want the dimensions to be by 600. I'm not sure. Well, I'll just have to try it. Okay. And then if we run this. Yeah. No. Uh. Which means I need to anchor it. Yeah. Like that. And now I should be able to resize. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's a little bit dark. So. Bring it down a little bit. Like that. Okay call this the boss boss color boss it's like a boss flash 
because I just want it to blink the color briefly. Okay. So now in the connector, I'm going to get the overlay in the reset. So it'll be root main overlay, and then we'll have a function to show boss flash, which will, <coughs> so this will be hidden by default, and then we'll say overlay dot get node. And then I'll make another one to hide it. This is an auto load script uh, called connector. So I have access to these functions everywhere in the project, which is super useful. Okay, so now in the bo boss spawner. Okay, so on timeout, I'll connector uh, show boss flash, and then once the worm is spawned, I'll hide it again, and I'll go ahead and set the timer a little lower so I don't have to wait so long and we'll see if that worked hmm Okay, I'll have to figure out why that didn't work. Okay, so the overlay is null, and what happened was I forgot the slash in the file path before root. So hopefully, it'll work this time. Oh, yes, okay. Cool. I need to figure out uh, why the polygons aren't rendering. It's kind of interesting. Uh, I think it's probably the view, the view box on the skeleton or the polygon, something. Okay, that seems to be working. So now I'm going to add an, um, add an add points function to the player so I don't have to worry about connecting through the signals. Um, and the bumpers should still work so I can refactor those later. And so the derp star, it's just add points, I believe. Is it on here? Or is it in main still? Player points is still in main. Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, so, I'll just make a new variable for the main so that'll just be root main 
and then we'll say main dot add points amount. Okay. So now um, on the space worm in the segment. Uh, I'll add, well, it's just on the body though. So here, I'll add an export variable for points equals zero. And now that should show up. So I'll give you 10 points for um, destroying the body segments, and then in segment, right, okay, so in the body shape, I'll just add the guide function, and we'll call the parent guide function first. And then we'll connector.add points points. Okay. And then on the boss, the main boss, I'll add an export variable for points here as well. For when you kill the whole worm, and then I'll add another one for when you kill the final worm. So final points will zero. Um, so you get like a hundred for killing each worm, and then a thousand, or maybe like two thousand. I don't know. Sure goes like 2,000 for killing it, for killing the last one, so completing the boss fight. Um, okay, then I'll add it to the group space worm. Group, and then on died. Does it have a died function? Uh, it's on the head, isn't it? Okay, so here instead of q3, I'll just call the parent died function, which will be the space worm. Um, so now I'll add a died function to the space worm. And this will queue free. Uh, and okay, so I need to. I don't remember, um, but I need to get nodes in the group. Get tree. Okay. So I think this will work. Space worm. So we'll say, uh, we'll make a worm count variable uh, dot size. And then if worm count is equal to one, so if it's the last worm, then we'll say connector add points, uh, final points, else 
So if there is more than one, add points, points. Okay. And then, and the boss spawner, uh, I'm gonna turn down the segments to like three. All right, so we'll wait for it to spawn. And then, oh. So there, 200, 300. I'm trying. It's really hard to control, but that's kind of the point, so. I'll get there eventually. Well, and it'll teleport back to me, which is nice. Okay, so there, we're getting points. And we killed the last one, so it dropped 2,000 points. And now the boss fight is over. Cool. I found a picture of an atom on Pixabay. Uh, it's free for commercial use, so it's really good. And I'll use that for the boss core. So I've added it to the project. I'm gonna make a copy of the health pack. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So you have to duplicate it. There. And we'll move that over here. Okay. So I'll rename that and change the sprite to the boss core, like so. It still has the collision shape. Um, okay, we're going to remove the script and add a new one. But what did I do over here? Okay, so we have the... Uh, I'm probably not gonna have a timeout on the boss core, so I'll delete the timer, and we'll just have on 2D entered. I already have the collision set up, uh, so on the rigid body, it's on the second layer, so it only collides no, it has no mask, so it doesn't collide with anything. Um, and then the area collides with the player only on, on layer 20. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, I don't know if this is gonna work, but I'm gonna go ahead and make a player stats, um, preload, auto load, that'll be in utils, player stats, I'm going to put an underscore because it's easier for me to read. Okay, so we have player stats and connector. Uh, the player stats is going to rely on the connector for the derp star. So I will, I think. Anyway, so now we're going to add the... Um, the boss core counter 
and we'll add a function to add boss core. And this will just increase by one for now. Um, yeah, and then we'll just print the boss cores so that I can make sure that works. But I'll get the GUI set up. All right. Close the rest of these. So here's the boss core. Uh, right. Now we're gonna say player stats add boss core. Okay. And then in main, I'll add a boss core to the pickups and we'll go ahead and move the player back over here so uh, so if I restart because boss core is equal to zero. Yes. Now it should actually work. Okay, so that increased by one. So that worked. Um, so now what I want to do is make it actually chase the player. So in process. This might be, I don't know if this should be physics process, but uh, okay, so we're gonna set the linear velocity to the um, where's the space bar? Teleport linear velocity equals rotation. Okay, so we'll get the rotation. Uh, I don't know if I actually want to set the rotation. Well, sure, why not? Okay, and then we'll set the linear velocity like that, except I want it to go a little bit slower. So maybe like that. Okay, it's not doing anything. Did it do something? Oh. Interesting. Um. Hmm. The boss core is a rigid body. Um, not really sure why that didn't work, but I'm gonna turn up the velocity and see if it helps. Okay, I mean, kind of. Not exactly what I want it to do, though. Huh. Yeah, I think it's because it's a rigid body, and it really doesn't like that. Um, but that's okay. Okay, so I'm also going to add a particle emitter So we'll 
add the particles and make a new material. Okay, and then so no gravity on that. And I actually want it to be behind the sprite, but I'll leave it up here for now. So, let's see. I think it's in direction spread initial velocity initial velocity random okay uh, so we'll make the spread 360 and that'll make it go out or 180 so it'll make it emit in all the different directions um, maybe like 50 on the initial velocity okay and then I'm gonna turn up the amount like 20 and then I'll increase the lifetime a little bit Maybe like, oh, and then, um, I think it's in color. Yeah. So I can make a new color ramp. Which sets... Okay, so this will be full opacity, and this will be zero opacity, so it fades out. Um, yeah, and then I think I probably just need more particles. How does that look? Okay, and then I'll go ahead and put that behind it. And see how that looks. It looks really nice, but it's still... I'm not sure why. Is it getting stuck on the... Uh, Huh. It's trying. No. Okay. So it's yeah. Okay, so I looked into it, and it doesn't like when you directly set the rotation, but uh, the angle seems to be fine. I'm gonna lower that down so it's reasonable, and there you go. So now, I can... Go ahead and move the derp star over a little bit, and I'll add a couple more of the boss cores. Uh, I'll put one over here, and now you can see, even if I fly downwards, they're going to follow me until uh, until I get the course. So you can see down there that they registered. So that's all good. All right, so now I can delete these. 
Um, and then I'll add a method to the connector. item yeah so we'll just uh, so this is in the auto load script and then we'll say pickups dot add child I okay so that should work the same and then in the space worm if it's the final worm, then we'll say connector drop item uh, boss core. So then we'll make a new instance of the boss core. say the position equals uh, the head global position um, okay and then I'm gonna go ahead and set the segments to one so it's easier to test and then we'll see what happens. So here's the worm and Look at that, it dropped, it flew towards me. Very cool. Okay. Now I just need to add the boss cores to the GUI. So in HUD, I'll add a panel container. Uh, call it call it boss cores. Uh, I'll leave it anchored in the top left, and I'll just use the default background, but you can set a custom texture. And then I'll add a label. Oh, no. Then I'll add a horizontal uh, box container, and then I'll add a label and a texture rect to this. So, the texture will be uh, the boss core, but, uh, so if you enable expand, and then you can set the minimum size to 50, or whatever you want, but you can set the minimum size without enabled to make it smaller. And then this will just start out at zero. Um, I might actually want these flipped. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. So that's kind of small. Uh, so you get a theme overrides and fonts. And new dynamic font. And then 
you can drag the TTF like that, and then I'll set the font size up to 35, like the points, that's the same. Alright, so now we have, and then you can see, it'll stay in the corner even when you resize it. Alright, uh, so now, in the uh, player stats, um, so here's where it's going to call the overlay from the connector. Oh, and then first in the HUD, I'll add the update boss cores with an amount, and then we'll say, I think I can just drag it, no, okay, so then we'll get boss cores. Uh, label dot value equals uh, cast it as a string and set the amount. Okay. Now in the player stats, we can get the overlay from the connector. Um, and then we'll say update boss cores uh, with the amount. So, um, and it might throw an error when I restart. I'll fix that. Okay. So now I'm going to add a couple boss cores to the pickups, just to make sure that's working. So I don't have to kill the boss. No. What did I do? Oh. <clears throat> Right. Maybe that'll work. Yeah. So I should probably... <clears throat> okay. I have too many tabs open. So... In the connector, I'll just go ahead and because I'm not really sure if I need. Oh, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to add a HUD variable just to make this a little bit easier. Okay. So now I can say connector HUD dot update boss course. <sighs> oh, right. Okay. Maybe it'll work now. Okay. <clears throat> so, base label with type of string. Oh. Text. Not value. Alright. Maybe it'll work this time. Oh, okay. So, but the question is when you restart, 
it does keep your the count which is good I want it to keep the count okay um, I do want it to update on ready so where would that be Probably okay. So I'll add a reset function. <clears throat> It might be better just to do it in the HUD. So, on ready, update boss cores with player stats, boss cores. Okay. So, now if we restart, and we still have two. And then it adds from there. Okay. And that's, um, yeah, I want the boss cores to carry over, so that's good.